Hey everyone, and welcome to my bathroom. And the whole reason we're here today is that I wanted to share with you all my morning skincare routine, especially during an incredibly stressful time, a stressful time that I know a lot of us are going through right now. It's really important to try and maintain as many routines as possible. And with your skin, at least me personally, my skin was kind of going through it during the beginning of quarantine. Now it's kind of settled back out. So I wanted to share with you my really extremely gentle routine that has certainly balanced out my skin. But I also wanted to share this routine with you all because I actually have started tretinoin. And if you're not familiar with tretinoin, it's a vitamin A derivative. It's definitely the gold standard in helping with acne and anti-aging. I plan on doing an entire journey with tretinoin, but what you basically need to to know for this video is that is that your skin can become incredibly compromised and irritated if you don't take good care of it. I typically have more of a normal to dry skin type as well so I always need to make sure that I'm keeping my skin in check and especially if you do have a very strong active incorporating into your routine. So this routine is going to be perfect for those of you with very sensitive skin. This is really about just keeping your skin barrier as healthy as possible. So first off in the morning I I put my hair completely up and out of my face. This is something that I didn't do as much when I didn't have bangs, but I certainly need to now. And the specific hair bands that I like to get have have this Velcro backing. You can just wrap it around and it makes it a lot easier. They look a little bit weird, but they are incredibly efficient. And that really is what this whole skincare routine is about. So with cleansing in the morning, you wanna be extremely gentle. At nighttime, you're not being exposed to a lot of free radicals, dirt and pollution, you're just sleeping. For me, it's really important that you are Using a cleanser that's not going to strip the skin, especially in the morning, I actually find now that I wouldn't necessarily need to cleanse every single morning because my skin is leaning a little bit more dry. But if I did have to recommend one cleanser, and this is the cleanser that I use quite often, it is the Cora's Greek Yogurt Cleanser. This is one that I've been using for a very long time. This actually uses SCI, which is a more gentle sulfate. Some sulfates can be extremely drying on the skin and basically they're they're detergents right it's what's making the product get all of the dirt off your skin if you're not careful with the cleanser that you're using you can really strip the skin but CSI is actually one of the most mild surfactants out there but it also tends to be a little bit more expensive so this isn't the cheapest cleanser out there but it is one that I go back to and I never find that it strips my skin it also has this really gorgeous creamy texture it feels really nice on the skin so I will just apply this to my skin should probably dampen your skin before you do this but I put it on my hand before I could do that. Also, while we're here, if you guys are wondering who that little guy is over there on my wall, no, that is not my typical preferred uh, home decor, but this Christmas I put him up in our bathroom and my boyfriend was really terrified when he went in the bathroom and saw him just sitting there watching him pee. And since then, it's kind of become an inside joke so we haven't taken it down. And now I kind of don't want to. So again, I'm just massaging this into my skin. I would go in and do a double cleanse if I had makeup on, but again, this is a morning cleanse. You should not be wearing makeup to bed. I have not worn makeup to bed in years and that's not to toot my own horn, it's just, once I saw the difference in my skin, when I actually started taking care of it, it's like I never I never wanted to go back. I'm using tepid water, not too hot, not too warm, especially because I have issues with broken capillaries, especially around my nose. Water that's too hot can definitely potentially um, break them even further. Then make sure that you get your neck and just take a clean towel and pat dry. Next up is moisturizers. Moisturizer, as I mentioned before, is especially crucial for me during this time. As I am on tretinoin, it has been incredibly important that I make sure that my skin barrier is functioning properly, that I'm keeping irritation down to a minimum. So there are two different moisturizers that I would personally recommend. I have one that's more heavy and one that is definitely more lightweight. The first one that is more on the lightweight side is my beloved, a product that I have talked about multiple times on my channel, Channel. It is the CeraVe PM Facial Moisturizing Lotion. There's a few reasons why this product is amazing. First of all, 
Don't be afraid that it says PM on it. This is an incredibly lightweight lotion. And this doesn't have a bunch of actives where you would be nervous about wearing this out in the sun. So there are a few different ingredients that I love in here. One, it has niacinamide. I'll talk about niacinamide a little bit later, but niacinamide is really excellent if you have more redness prone skin. Niacinamide is amazing at balancing out the skin and making the skin become more resilient. This also has glycerin, which is a humectant. It's going to pull in water from the air into the skin. And this also has multiple different ceramides. And ceramides are incredibly helpful if you want to make sure that your skin is functioning properly. Ceramides are kind of like the building blocks of the cells. And when you incorporate them into your skincare routine, your cells are going to be able to become more resilient. And that's super important, especially if you're going on a product like Tretinoin. So I put out a little bit on the back of my hand so you could see but you can see that this is actually an incredibly lightweight lotion. It sinks into the skin in a really beautiful way. This also has hyaluronic acid, which is a humectant, and all humectants have a certain property to them, which attracts water to themselves. Really great if you have dehydrated skin. This does have some occlusive properties to it. It does have dimethicone, which is amazing at sealing in moisture, and I think silicones get a really bad rap in skincare. There are definitely some people that are sensitive to them. It's definitely the case for some people, but I think for most people it's not. But if you want a very lightweight lotion for every day, I highly recommend this one. The one that I've been using quite a lot to make sure that my skin really is staying super, super hydrated and incredibly moisturized is the La Roche-Posay Lipicar Balm, the Intense Repairing Moisturizer Cream. This shit is heavy duty. You can see right away how much product you get with this. This is a great bang for your buck product, especially if you have dry skin. This is thick with three C's, my friends. So if you are looking for an incredibly thick moisturizer that's really going to get the job done, I would highly recommend this one. It's very, very thick. But I think many people are afraid of thick moisturizers when honestly they can do the absolute most for your skin and can really balance out your skin in an incredible way. This formula feels incredibly plush on the skin though. It doesn't feel greasy. It's not not a pleasure to apply to the skin. And the reason I think that that is the case is that this is a shea butter based moisturizer. Shea butter is an incredible ingredient. Shea butter has a ton of fatty acids within it. So it's going to be really good at helping to repair the skin. Your skin barrier needs fatty acids. It also naturally has polyphenols, which carry some antioxidant properties. Now it's kind of debatable on how much of those antioxidants actually get to you. But I will say that, that because this is a shea butter based product with a pump and it's not one that you are opening a jar, it is much more preferred and you're more likely to get antioxidant benefits from packaging like this, so that's great. But in general, shea butter tends to be excellent for inflamed skin. So if your skin is just not doing well, you've tried everything, it's really important to take a step back and use a product that is really going to seal in moisture and prevent trans epidermal water loss, which is essentially when water is evaporating off your skin and sort of taking hydration with it. Shea butter is an occlusive and it's going to kind of seal in everything and stop that hydration from leaving your skin. But shea butter isn't amazing at holding water on its own, which is why Roche-Posay did something very smart and they also added glycerin again. So they're adding these humectant ingredients to pull in moisture while also combining it with the occlusive like shea butter to make sure that everything is sealed in once it's attracted to the skin. And it also has niacinamide. And something that I didn't mention before about niacinamide and why it's such an incredible ingredient, niacinamide is essentially a B vitamin and it helps your skin produce its own antioxidants. For this reason, niacinamide is, again, incredibly anti-inflammatory. And there's a lot of proven research that when you are using a product with niacinamide in it, in combination with a Retin-A product, it reduces the irritancy of your retinoids, but also increases the amount of ceramides present in the skin. It overall just helps your skin's tolerance for actives. It also has been shown to help with dark spots, melasma. So I want to show you how this applies to my skin because I think it's really important. I'm using that much and I'm just going to warm it up in my fingers and start applying it. It is so comforting. 
but this isn't a greasy product. The minute that it hits the skin, it's not cooling by any means, but it really is just such a comforting product. Again, I'm just taking that all over. If you're going to be wearing a lot of makeup, I would probably go with the CeraVe PM over this one. Not that this doesn't look good under makeup, but this is just a little bit thinner. And next we're going to apply some actives. So I'm not applying any actives to my face because I'm just starting tretinoin. Again, I'm making sure that my skin is handling the tretinoin. And when you're applying too many actives to your skin, it can actually be pretty detrimental, but I am not applying tretinoin at the moment to my neck and my chest. So what I like to do when I go to bed is try and wear um, a boat neck shirt like this or a more baggy shirt so that I have access to my neck and chest. That way I'm more likely to actually take care of these areas. We tend to really forget about our neck and chest and it's important that you take care because you tend to get a lot of sun damage here. It's essentially the same sort of skin that you have on your face. It's very vulnerable. So what I like to go in with now is a vitamin C serum. Vitamin C is an incredible antioxidant, but it is very unstable. So you have to be careful with what formula you choose. The formulas that perform well can also be irritating. That does tend to be the case sometimes with vitamin C. But the May Love Glow Maker Antioxidant Serum, this one is actually way more affordable than some of the extremely high-end vitamin C serums out there. And this has 15% L-ascorbic acid, which is the gold standard in vitamin C. That is the one vitamin C derivative with the most research behind it. Research actually proving that it is effective in the skin. Look for a vitamin C serum with something between 10 and 20%. Anything under 10% probably won't be effective and anything over 20% really isn't going to increase the effectiveness of your product. It's actually probably just going to make your skin even more irritated. But not only does this have L-ascorbic acid in it, it also has vitamin E and ferulic acid. These three ingredients combined tend to make the most stable and effective vitamin C, and there's a lot of research supporting that. Vitamin E and ferulic acid both play a very key role in stabilizing the formula. So I'm going to take one pipette, put it into my palms, and apply to my neck and to my chest. And again, I would not be doing this if I was using tretinoin on my neck and chest, but I am not at the moment. So just applying that and really pressing it into the skin. One thing that I really like about applying moisturizer to my face first is there is still a little bit of residual moisturizer on my hands. So the vitamin C is way less likely to be irritating on the skin. And I have had some irritation problems with vitamin C serums before. This one, I find that if I kind of sandwich it in between a moisturizer, I never have an issue. But the reason I've been focusing on my neck and chest is that I got a bad sunburn about two summers ago and I was starting to notice that I was getting more freckling around my chest. I kind of shifted my focus onto my chest to help reverse some of that sun damage. And then after that, I'll go in with a little bit of moisturizer. Try if you can to apply it in an upward motion. That way you're not dragging the skin down. I'm honestly not perfect about that all the time. Next, we're going to go in with a sunscreen. Sunscreen, especially when you are on tretinoin, is incredibly important. If you're gonna go on tretinoin and not use a sunscreen, you just shouldn't go on tretinoin because you are reversing all of the good things that tretinoin is doing for your skin right now. So I am using currently the Can Make Mermaid Skin Gel UV. I have really been liking this one. It is a mixture of chemical and physical. It has zinc and titanium dioxide, tinosorb, uvenol. It also does have octanosate, which is not great for the coral reefs. It has actually been proven to not be good for the coral reefs. Didn't know that that ingredient was present when I bought this. I will not be repurchasing, but I do have some other sunscreens that I love a lot. I love the Pure Rito Centella sunscreen. I love the Kiss Me Mommy sunscreen. So I'll link some of the other sunscreens that I love down below. But the reason that I really like this is that some Asian sunscreens do tend to have quite a bit of denatured alcohol within them, which can be very irritating on the skin and can exacerbate dryness. Not with some people, and I do recommend you using a sunscreen with denatured alcohol in it. If you have more oily skin, they can tend to have a more matte finish, which I think some of you will prefer. And it's not to say that oily skin has to worry about dry skin less. I mean, that's probably the case, but people with oily skin tend to not want to apply sunscreen because of the texture. So if you do find a sunscreen with alcohol in it that you like the texture, it's better to kind of just get into the habit of using a sunscreen 
in my opinion. This one is really not greasy at all. It has a nice finish to it. See, it kind of gives you more of a glassy sort of finish. It's not greasy though, and this is actually quite lightweight. You really work it into the skin. You're still gonna need to wait a little bit of time before you go out in the sunlight to actually get the SPF 50 that this says it has. So keep that in mind. And then applying to my forehead. And of course, we're not going to forget the neck. And doing this routine in combination with my nighttime routine has really made my skin feel balanced. I haven't honestly had a lot of peeling on my skin whatsoever. But the one area that I have noticed my skin is a little bit more dry is my lips. So I'm going to take one of my favorite lip balms. I actually did an entire video on like my favorite lip balms with ingredients that actually work on the lips. And one of my favorites was the Nukes Rev de Mille. This is an excellent, excellent lip balm. And I've been noticing in the corners of my lips. I have been getting pretty dry. Especially in this corner, I have a little bit of a crack which is not comfortable, but this does a really good job at not just being a protectant for the lips, but actually repairing them. Don't have anything against a more protective lip balm, but one with some hydrating and moisturizing ingredients is definitely preferred. This uses beeswax as a more protective ingredient, but it also has the glorious shea butter, which again, I have found has just made such a difference in my skin. And we are complete. So thank you guys so much for watching this. And definitely let me know if you do want to see a nighttime skincare routine, how I've incorporated tretinoin into my routine, or if you just kind of want to see a video all about tretinoin, I'm happy to do both or either or of those videos. I'll have all these products linked down below for you guys. And if you have any questions about my routine or any of the specific products, I'm always here to help. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.